Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy here. I've got another Blender video for you this morning. You may have noticed by now that the course that you're doing at the moment is actually called 3D Environments. And so now that we've learned some basic Blender skills, it's time for us to start creating some environments. When you get up to doing a project, it will be up to you whether that actually is a you know, some land or a terrain or an island or whether a 3D environment is something like a you know, a character or a figurine or whatever, we'll, we'll figure that out later on, or, or a house, doesn't matter. But I wanted to show you some skills now to actually start creating some stuff like what you can see behind me. I've just Googled here, Blender Low Poly Terrain, to get a few examples. And what I want to do this morning is show you how you can go about creating some things, like some of these little islands and, and things. Um, so let's, let's just jump over into Blender. I'll just move this out of the way and then get my face down the bottom here. So I'm in a new environment in Blender and we want to start to create this island and start to create some sort of random terrain, not just a flat piece of land. So I'm going to knock out this cube and this camera. I'll leave the light. Uh, it's not doing any harm and it might be useful when I do some test renders later. And I'm going to start by adding a new plane and I'm going to straight away come over here and I'm going to scale that up 10 times on all axes accesses, whatever. The next thing I want to do is I need to come into edit mode and I'm going to right click and choose subdivide and then what that what this is going to do is it's going to split our plane from being a one by one square. You can see already it's now become a two by two in that there, is, there are two faces here, two faces here and when you've clicked subdivide that you get this little pop-up down here that just says subdivide and if you click on that you get more options and I'm going to change this to something like 25, 30, 40, doesn't matter, it's really up to you. And at this point, I can start to manipulate this flat plane to give us some sort of mountains and hills and valleys and stuff. So before we do that, though, we just want to check that two specific things are turned on. Uh, because if I, for example, at the moment, say I just come and grab one vertex and I pull it up, it's just going to pull up just that one vertex. But I want it to sort of pull up a bunch of them around it to create kind of a little mountain exploding out of the plane here. So what I can do is... I need to choose up here this little tiny circle. If you hover over it, it says proportional editing. I want to turn that on. And then this little drop down box next to it sort of becomes selectable. It's no longer grayed out. You want to click on that and just make sure that it's selected smooth, not any of these other things. You want to make sure that's on smooth. Okay, so now what happens is if I double press A to unselect this and I just grab one vertex and I pull it up, you'll see what happens. It, it now pulls up that one vertex but also a few of them around it get impacted and so what I can start to do now is just grab a bunch of vertexes and slowly pull those up in a little area and you can see how it starts to create this sort of uneven uh, thing of terrain. The other thing you can do is you could hit C to use your circle select and just quickly grab a few vertexes, hit escape to get out of circle select and then pull those up and you can very quickly start to get uh, this sort of uneven mountain feel around your environment. So I'm just going to stop talking for a second and I'm just going to do this to a few different mountains and things here. You could also jump into uh, face select mode to do this a bit faster. It will work the same. That might create, if you're in face select mode, you get a little, a little plateau sort of thing. So it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. You just want to make some random ones. Remember between each to sort of double press A to unselect and then reselect some new ones. Over here I might do a bit of a lake that actually drops down and then just because I like the appearance a bit more what I might actually do here is I'm going to go around the entire edge and just sort of roughly I'm not going to make this even the whole way around I'm just sort of randomly selecting these edges and I'm going to drop all the edges down just a little bit. And then the last thing that I'm going to do, because when we get up to rendering this, in my opinion, it looks funny when the side of your object is like zero thickness, it's just a plane. What I'm actually going to do is select all, come underneath, hit E for extrude, like we learned right at the start in the blocky name, and I'm just going to pull that down a wee bit, just so that now we've got, you know, some thickness there. You could, if you wanted to, start to scale, you know, you could scale that up or down to give your 
platform a bit of an edge or whatever it doesn't matter so that's just an idea of I guess how you could start to create this little plane but the other thing is that you know it's it's very boxy still I know we're going for this low poly look but we want a little we want a little bit more unevenness and a little bit of messiness within our object so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some modifiers that's a, a thing in blender we can add a modifier to impact this object to modify stuff within the object so let's get out of edit mode into object mode Come over here to the little spanner on the right hand side in your big tab down the side. One of these buttons here should be a little blue spanner. We're going to add two. The first one that we're going to add is called Displace. If you choose Displace, you can see everything's just gone a bit crazy. Now what happens is when you choose Displace, it actually creates a, a texture that you don't need to worry about that changes things within your shape. And the default texture is black and it sort of pushes everything down. So what we want to do is click on New still looks weird I know now you want to come over to your texture tab that looks like a little chessboard and we're going to change this from type that we're going to change the type from image or movie to clouds and now it looks even more crazy just ignore it that's okay come back to your spanner tab again and now on top of your object choose control a and choose rotation and scale and you can see we start to get your your landmass back and it looks a little bit more natural but it is very altered. It's very sort of up and down and, and pretty strong. We can easily change the strength of this modifier just by clicking in the strength tab and lowering that number to something like 0.5. You can experiment and make that whatever you like. Now that I've done that, the, what the purpose of that is, so this part of my object here was before, it was just all of these polygons were just squares in a grid like this. I just went into edit mode to see that if I come back out. So you can see now they're still squares, but they're up and down. They're sort of, you know, diagonal, zigzag, whatever, but they are still squares and that will come out when we do some rendering. We need to change that. We don't want them to be squares. We want them to be sort of random sizes. We need to get those vertex, the vertices and sort of just shift them a little bit so that everything changes. So we're going to add a second model modifier. This one is called decimate. And we're going to change the ratio here to again something like 0.5. And you can see that what that does is it takes your squares and it changes them so that they're not squares anymore. It just shifts the vertexes in sort of random random ways. You can play around with some of these settings here within your displace and decimate modifiers. Once you're done though, we need to make sure that we apply them. You can't just leave them there. They haven't actually been applied yet. They're just like that you just test. These are tests of settings and once you've finished testing them you need to actually apply them to your model. So to do that you need to hit the little drop down box next to the camera and you're going to choose apply. Then you're going to do the same thing for the decimate one and there you go. So now you don't see them in this list of modifiers anymore and what that means is you can't make changes to them. Your object now looks like this. It's no longer that square grid with changes and if you go into edit mode now you can see I no longer have squares the changes have been made permanently so here's my new landmass okay so now we're going to start to add some color here so if we come uh, into edit mode and we go over to your materials tab that we've worked in when we were doing the mushroom this look, looks like a little beach ball click on new and I'm going to change uh, maybe a grass color I'll choose my base color here to a bit of a green and we can't see that because right now our default view type up here is solid, which you would uh, is, is shading mode, solid mode. You just want to change that to the beach ball as well, and you'll start to see your green island here, or your green little little thing. Uh, now we've we've changed our base color to green. I would suggest turning specular off or at least very low, just to uh, there's less reflection. Grass isn't reflective. That's not the not the scene I want in my environment here and you can start to see now that this is already sort of working and if you hit F12 it'll oh, I don't have a camera I'd have to create a camera to do a rendering I was going to give you a preview there but that's okay I've got some more changes I want to make now I might actually want to make the the mountains the mountain ranges a bit of a different color maybe they're a little bit darker maybe you want them to be snow capped mountains so you could do a white texture on the top of these mountains or whatever so I'll show you how to do that what we can do over here is just to hit this little plus to add a second material and once you've got that material selected click new and we can create another one so I'm going to change the base color of this too I'm just going to do a bit of a darker green turn off specular on that as well and so you can just toggle between these two and look at the thing in this base color or you could open this preview tab to see your color assigned to a sphere to get an idea of each one you know one's darker and so now what I can do is I'm going to start to select these mountain ranges just by hitting C for circle select I'm going to jump into face mode, 
face select mode, C for circle select, and I'm just going to sort of, I don't want to specifically come around and be tidy with how I'm selecting here. You want it to be sort of crazy. So I'm just going to sort of, you know, randomly grab majority of this mountain, not all of it. And then I'm going to choose material two and hit assign. If you hit assign, it'll take that material and assign it to the polygons that you've got selected here. Hit A to unselect everything and then tab out of edit mode. And you can see when you're in object mode now, I've got this sort of darker mountain range. That might be a bit too dark. Maybe you wanted a little bit more of a subtle change, but you get the idea. I'll do the same thing for this other mountain over here. Material to assign. You get the idea. I might do a third one now where I add some dirt around the edges because I think that will look pretty cool. So I'll add another one, new color, change my base to a brown, which is just a dark orange. Something like that will do. Turn off my specular because I don't want reflection or very low at least. And now I'm going to come over here and just randomly grab with my circle select tool that I like some mass around the sides of my object here randomly. And I might just get one in the middle there just for fun. Choose my brown and hit assign. And so there I've got this sort of brown around the edges now as well. Okay, so now I've sort of got, I've got some terrain going on here and that's okay. And if I was to insert a camera really quickly, it's gone right in the middle there. I'm gonna grab it up here on my option bar and just move it so that I can see what's going on. Move it to somewhere sensible. And like we did before, you'll also need to rotate it so that it's looking at your object. You guys would have done this when we did the mushroom tutorial. Whatever, you can manipulate that later. So if I hit F12, it'll give us a rendering from inside this camera. Okay, now I've got one light. I left that light there at the start, which is creating some pretty heavy shadows. So you could start to add some more lights now and move these lights around. I won't do that sort of too many. I'm not going to talk to you about that for ages. You could move your camera around, whatever. The other thing that you'll notice though is when I hit F12, I'm just going to aim this a little bit more down. Oh, that was too far. Sorry, it's taking a bit of time here. Okay, it looks a bit silly how there's just, there's nothing underneath it. So what you could do, like some of you did with your mushrooms, is we can actually, while we're in object mode, we could add another plane, just scale it up like hugely to fill, you know, the whole screen kind of thing, and then just move it down so that it's just kind of, you know, lined up with wherever you want. And then just that we could apply a similar color to that one. So I'll just go new and I'll chuck a green on, you know, so that it doesn't look too out of place. Make sure you turn off your reflective specular um, and that will give you a bit of a, you know, at least there's a background under it. You could start to manipulate that. If you wanted to, you could grab the bottom vertexes of your initial island and stretch those out or whatever, but you get the idea. So I've done a really dodgy job here of moving my camera and setting lights. Um, I might do a better job now off camera to get a good sample picture of what we've done in this tutorial and I'll upload that uh, maybe as the thumbnail and on your, your course page as well so you can see it. But you get the idea here. In this video, we've just tried to create this sort of basic landmass, and in the next video, we might start to add some things like rivers and water um, and in this series we're going to start to do some trees and things as well to make this sort of a, a more of an environment but anyway hopefully that gets us off to a good start thanks guys and I'll see you guys in the next video just figured out a couple of things that might be useful for you at the end of this while I was setting up to uh, finish this and get an image rendered what I've actually done is I've inserted a camera and I'll show you in a second how to move that around and aim it which is really easy. I've added a plane here with a similar green but a little bit darker and put it underneath and then I actually added one in the background which I've made a bit of a sky blue and you'll see why I've done that in a minute. So if you choose your camera and then go view cameras set active object as camera. Now uh, what I can do is well, while you're actually looking through the camera like this, if you select it up here, you can go to view navigation, walk navigation, and then you can just use your WSAD key and your mouse to aim the camera, just like you were in a video game, which makes it really easy. The only thing is I can't figure out how to go up or down. So what I've been doing is just kind of looking down and hitting W to move down and then coming up again or looking up and moving up 
and then looking down or whatever, you can use W, R, S and what is it, A and D to go sideways, you get the idea. And so I've sort of, I'm going to aim mine to kind of get a view of the sky through those mountains, something like that. And then when we hit F12 to render it, you get this nice thing with the, with the background there. I might want to lighten that, add another light, whatever, add some lights into your thing, add a sunlight, have an experiment with that. But I thought that might help you add a floor, add a background, and to be able to manipulate the camera. Enjoy.